Thank you so much for being here today. We cannot wait to unpack everything about the fascinating fasting concepts. Can you tell me your name and a bit about your background? Yeah, and thanks for hosting me. Uh, my name is Joseph Anton. I'm a physician by training. And then upon graduation, I felt my passion was more for public health and health policy and changed the word in the sense of helping people live healthier longer. And after a long track of doing a series of consulting and, and executive roles and ended up lending on the concept of fasting and healthy aging and reversing biological aging. So this, this idea of fasting is, is obviously a very broad idea. Can you tell me a little bit about what got you interested in it and where it began? Yeah, so actually this is a very old project of USC, the University of Southern California, and under the leadership of a prominent professor in this field called Walter Longo, they had a theory some 23 years ago, which is um, aging is the catalyst of most diseases. And, uh, you know, we've accepted Alzheimer's comes with age. We've accepted that most cancers and most uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases come with age. But we never blamed aging. And once they understood a little bit the pathways within the cell that tells the cell to grow and therefore to age versus to hibernate or to, or, or, you know, or to stay still, stand still, and and reverse aging, um, once they understood these mechanisms, they identified fasting to be one of the anti-aging intervention to the body. So therefore they got really interested in how to keep people healthier longer by reversing their biological aging. So it's basically you chronologically aging, but biologically staying the same or aging at a slower pace. And therefore this, put, this pushes the onset of the chronic diseases by many years and increase your health span. It's a big word today that we should focus on more than lifespan because we want to keep people healthier longer rather than sicker longer. Interesting. So our health span has actually really gotten shorter, but our lifespan is longer. So we're unhealthy for longer periods of our life. Yes, we've done a lot for chronic disease management. Mm -hmm. We did very little on chronic disease prevention. And this is what the focus today of integrative and functional medicine is and preventive health care is how can we help people live healthier longer and focus on health span, which is actually what led me personally to focus on aging and, and, and fasting, the impact of fasting and aging, because I think it's one of the most powerful intervention you can do on health span. Fasting is one of the most powerful interventions that we can use. And it's, a, it's, it's not a simple process, but it's something that doesn't cost us any money. We can decide to do it at any point, right? And we have the control within our own bodies. And it has the longest or the best benefit to our, our health span? In part of our ancestors' diets, before we had before we invented how to store food, how to hunt efficiently, et cetera, they had to go through days of fasting when they, there was not food available. And so imagine the northern part of the States in the wintertime, it was so cold and there was you know, food or, uh, or preys were not easily you know, available. So our body actually used to eat and not to eat. What happens with us Lately, in the, in the last few hundreds of years, we eat and eat and eat, and we, we don't fast anymore. So fasting was part of the diet. So no eating was part of the eating habits. And we lost that, and today we overeat. And this, this is a mismatch with what our body has been tailored to do or to cope with. And therefore, you start seeing these you know, lifestyle-related and food-related chronic diseases, notably of obesity and diabetes. But also cancer has increased lately, uh, Alzheimer's and other age-related chronic diseases. So talk to us a little bit about fasting. So for me personally, I love fasting because I had very severe eczema and that inflammation in my body was embarrassing and itchy and, and would bleed and, and it was horrible. And when I started to reduce the inflammation just by giving my body a break. So I would fast for three days, I would fast for five, I would fast for 10, I would go through different bouts, and then I would fast for 24 hours once a week. And uh, overall, that to me transformed my health. And today I do, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll not eat for about 16 hours. And I know that there's so much new research. So can you talk to us about the different types of fasts and yeah. what and how and why? When you want to mention the word fasting biologically, your body doesn't fast if you skip food for eight hours or seven hours or 10 or 12, because you're still absorbing and processing 
the growth and the postprandial secretions from the last meal that you ate. So sometimes actually you go to work, you're so busy during the day and you, you only eat, you know, in the 6 or 7 p.m. time. So you spend, you restricted your food that day to say the, 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 the last meal you get that night. But it doesn't mean you fasted. Yes, you stayed without food ingestion for several hours, but your body is still biologically processing what you had for breakfast or dinner last night. So biologically, we don't like to call it fasting, but I understand why people would call it practically as a type of fasting. We call it mostly time-restricted feeding. So from the time that we eat a meal, how many hours do we need to wait until our body actually starts to fast? So biologically, we believe it's 24 to 30 hours, actually, until it's closer to 30 hours. So there's a good eight hours for digestion and the direct digestion and, and, and effects of that. But then also there's the signals of the body of, hey, you know, there's some macro macronutrients that came to the body, the proteins, the, the carbohydrates, the fats, etc. And the body processes the, the consequence of that. And the cells nourishes, you know, itself. And there's, a, you know, insulin is going to increase and so like growth factor and all the postprandial, if you want, biological uh, uh, food processing. So you use the word postprandial. That's really the time after we're digesting or while we're still finishing digesting? Yeah, that takes up to eight hours. But then after that, there's a signal up in the body that there's food and therefore the body is still at the cellular level, you know, getting getting the, uh, the ripple effect of food and doesn't really go into fasting until you go up to 30 hours with no food. So you're in what's considered a postperennial state. So you eat your food and then you're in postperennial up to 30 hours of not eating. And then once you hit that 30 hour, then you go into fasting. Then biologically your body is, is fasting. And once your body goes into biological fasting, what's going on? Why is this the biggest buzzword? Yeah, what, go, what goes on is depends on what you do after. If you eat again, then we call it intermittent fasting, meaning you fasted, say, for a day, the 24 hours. Then you eat again, and then in two days afterwards, say, you fast again. And it's a very popular way of doing intermittent fasting, what we call the 5-2, if you heard about it, mm -hmm. meaning five days during a week you eat normal, and a couple of days you eat you know, below 500 or below 600 calories to try mm -hmm. to mimic fasting. So what happens after the 24 or 30 hours depends on what you do. If you eat again, then your body gets food again, and, and basically you skipped food intake for a, for a good long period, which is very good for, you know, weight loss and for basically allowing the body to spend what it ate or what it stored and then the body spend it. So this is why intermittent fasting has been, you know, has shown to, to, to do very well with metabolic related, weight, weight related metabolic issues because it's helping you to decrease calorie intake, say once or twice or three times a week, depending on how you do it. So even in those first 30 hours, from what you're saying, there are a lot of beneficial biological effects. Because in parallel, you're spending calories. So, so what your body has just ingested, uh, if you want, as calories, has enough time to respend it rather than to store it and then eat again in, in the next six hours and then eat again, eat, eat again in the next six hours, etc. And this is one of the actually contradictions today that we have with say 15, 20 years ago, when the big theory was eat multiple times a day. And what we notice is that, yes, if you want to decrease the portions and eat multiple times, the total amount of calorie probably is, is decreased per portion. But actually, your body is in a constant mode of growth because it's receiving food every, say, four or six hours. And that growth, you know, we biologi biologically grow towards our end. We don't grow, you know, laterally or, or in the third dimension. We grow towards end, to our end. And the more you push the body biologically to grow, it's actually speeding aging and it speeds all the age-related diseases. It's, it's an unbelievable achievement to think of all the years of research, the level of researchers and the work that they've done to be able to have something that someone can take and benefit from is a huge gift. And, and I'm so happy to have had the opportunity to interview you and uh, learn from you. Thank you, Dr. Anton.